Okay, well, welcome everybody who's uh, just joined us. Uh, welcome back, those who've been watching the whole program today. This is uh, session five, it's the last one, so you'll be happy to know. You can pop a bottle of um, sparkling wine. We're going to say cava there, let's pop a bottle of sparkling wine. Um, once we've um, once we finished, that's if you've been following all five sessions today. So we're delighted to um, uh, to have uh, three different uh, sparkling wine producers with us in this uh, this last session. Uh, but before um, I introduce you, I just um, uh, like to point you to the chat, and you already got it there. So we got Luke from Italy. Hello there, Nelson from Brazil. Welcome, welcome. Uh, carry it back there. You think you need the di diploma for uh, attending all five sessions from England and uh, Las Vegas, is it? Barcelona back. Another Nelson again from Brazil and uh, Tomohiro from uh, New York City. Okay, so that's a, a good a good crowd to have. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to Gareth from the Cava region in Spain. Hello. And then we have uh, Fernando and Julian from uh, Mendoza, Argentina. Hello, everyone. And then we have uh, Pamela from uh, also in the, the Penedes wine region, but not Cava. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let's go to um, uh, first to G Gareth. Uh, Hi there, good afternoon. Okay, a bit of a bit of a delay on uh, Pamela, so we'll have to compensate for that later. Now, Gareth, um, Good so welcome, welcome back. You you were with us in the Spanish Wine Week uh, last month, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think you've got some interesting contacts from that. Look, Canada coming in, so not everybody's on holiday. Happy Canada Day, there, Linda. Uh, first of first of July is Canada Day. If you didn't know. Oh. Excellent. So we, we, uh, we've uh, some 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 are uh, watching in. That's good. So this time, uh, you sh last time you showed us um, some still wine, a couple of still wines, uh, but of, co of course this time you can't. So it has to be a sparkling wine. You've got, uh, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, we can see clearly a, a couple of Cava bottles. So perhaps uh, you could uh, tell us a little bit about the um, philosophy of the winery, the the the, the terroir, where, where you are, and uh, of course about the two two. Um, bubblies you've got there to, to your um, right. Well, thank you, Anthony. Uh, my name is Gareth York. I'm the export manager at Ferre y Catasus, and we are a uh, family-owned winery in the Penas region, just very close to Villafranca in a village called La Granada. Um, the winery is owned by the Ferre group, and uh, they uh, sort of claim to fame, as it were, would be that we uh, the, the, the group uh, are the owners of the modernist Catalan restaurant Patagats in Barcelona. So um, the whole art modernist theme runs very much through our, our wines and is part of our philosophy um, with that brand of Barcelona Catalism, Catalan and uh, art from here. Um, we are a winery that was founded in 2000. Uh, we do produce still wines, as you said, Anthony, in the Penas region, and we also produce carvers as well. We have around 45 hectares of vineyards in three different areas in the Penedès. Uh, one is actually uh, part of the uh, land of the where the winery is in La Granada, and then we also have another in Castell uh, uh, Castelví, just uh, up the road, and also then down in Castellet, just towards Tarragona. Okay, so we, as I say, we have about 46 hectares there, uh, mainly. Uh, calcareous, sandy, loam texture, um, vineyards with a vine, age of vines from around 15 to 50 years roughly old, okay? Um, as you said, we're presenting sparkling wine in the Dio Cava, and uh, just in case anybody wasn't sure about it, uh, Cava is the traditional method made here in uh, Spain with uh, local grapes, second fermentation of the bottle, and the base of our wines, sparkling wines, are the local grape varieties of Charello, Macabeo, and Parellada. Okay, that's the, the grapes we use here. Um, going on to our first cover, the Celia Baybe. This is a young 
very fruit driven carbo. It's a brut nature. So there is no added sugar, no dosage at all, uh, just residual sugar here in the bottle. And we have, as I say, the three grapes, Macabeo, Charello, Parellada, around nine to 12 months in the second fermentation of the bottle. Okay. Um, and then we are presenting also the Mare Mireles. This is a brute reserva with just Macabeo and Charello. Uh, no Parellada here. So it's a much more rounder, much richer cava, reserve cava with about 24 months on the lees. Uh, the brute here, we do a brute, and we actually do a brute nature as well, which um, just here to show you as well. Um, so the brute normally has around eight grams of sugar in the dosage, and of course the brute nature, a zero dosage. And the second fermentation normally is around 24 months. So you have much more volume on the palate, much more of those nice yeasty brioche toasted notes there. Okay. I don't know if you've got any comments or questions that you'd like to add or throw in, Anthony, here. Right. Well, no questions yet. Uh, the uh, the because um, the the difference between uh, the young cover and the mm. the preserved yeah. cover is there's there's actually a, um, a labeling a labeling um, system, isn't there? That you can. Because for someone who was asking, uh, not 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 now, but earlier, how, well, you've got a reserve cow, grand reserve, and all that. But how do you know if you're buying when you're in the shop? If you're buying it, how do you know if it's reserve or grand right. reserve? Yes, that's a very good question. We don't actually produce grand reserves. We do produce young carvers and reserve carvers. A very quick visual way of seeing this, and this is um, all across the board in all carver is the little sticker here on the top of the bottle. And as you'll see here on the Celia Baby, this is a white sticker, which the white color means that this is a young carver. It's, it, it doesn't, um, it's basically less than 15 months on the leaves, whereas the reserve carver you'll see here has a green sticker, okay? Uh, and this shows that it's a reserve carver. It, if it were the case of a grand reserver, then that will be a black sticker on there, okay? So you have a very quick, easy visual way of seeing a young cover with a white sticker, the reserve cover with green, and a grand reserver with black. Uh, and as I say, that is part of the DO uh, cover regulations and it's mandatory on all bottles that are, are uh, sold from the winery, be it national or international in the export market, okay? Okay. Okay, so let me... Uh... Just, just, just going back on that as well, uh, the young carvers need to be on the lees for up to 15 months, okay? Um, and a reserve carver needs to be on the lees for up to 24 months. And then a grand reserver would be 33, 34 months, sorry, on the lees, okay? So again, you have uh, a very determined uh, and marked time of in the, uh, the bottle fermentation for each style of cava that we, that we, uh, we produce here in cava, okay? Okay, so uh, we're going to put your um, PDF up. Uh, sorry, this is a question. No, we're gonna put your um, PDF for people to uh, access. Yeah, there it is. For the source is uh, available, so you've got the the uh, information you can see on the website when you uh, registered and of course got the two technical data sheets of these two uh, splendid caverns. Okay, so we'll come back to Gareth a bit, a bit later, look at the export market. So let's go over to uh, Argentina now, to um, Fernando and uh, Julian. Uh, so must be freezing cold uh, at the moment where you are. Is it freezing yeah, cold? By the look. Yeah, it starts yeah, on. Yeah, the the <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah. delighted to have you on the program and uh, delighted to uh, welcome you. Um, thank you, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I think everybody's keen to discover uh, sparkling wines from Argentina, especially uh, made it with the traditional method. Exactly. Uh, so so uh, perhaps you, I, I mean, your terroir is completely different to um, and, and yeah. 
uh, to, to other parts of the world and the highest vineyards in the world some of yes, them yes. So, so perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the the, the winery the location the altitude the mm -hmm. sunlight and everything and and of course present the two sparkly wines you have there sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are here to do that Okay, well, uh, we want to, to, to introduce our, our vineyard, it's a family vineyard. We are located in the province of Mendoza. Uh, the particular area is uh, the region of Valle de Uco, which is uh, located about 1,200 meters, that's 1,200 meters above the sea level. Um, the, this, the, the point where, where our vineyard is located is uh, Gualtayari, is in the city of Tupungato, which uh, has uh, uh, faces the, the mountain range, the Andes, La Cordillera de los Andes, which um, provides uh, rather fresh weather. What, what that means, uh, uh, we, 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 are, we are proud to have a, a very marked uh, thermal amplitude that makes the nights very cold and the and the, um, the daytime is very warm, so that makes a, a, a polyphenolic apport to the, to the grape, which um, helps uh, the color and the tannins of the, of the grape. You know, it's very, very precious for the winemakers. That's, that's something precious because uh, um, you get the, the characteristics of the grape well marked. Also, we are, we are in, a, in a soil, the soil is uh, sandy and uh, with a lot of limestone um, apports, which uh, is given by the erosion. You know, we have very, very fast winds on these areas, which make erosion and the, and the soil is very sandy, which uh, nurtures the, the, the roots of the plants. So for that, uh, we are very proud of it. Um, well, our vineyard uh, counts uh, 44 hectares of, uh, of, of, vi of, of vines, which some of them are up to 50 years old. Um, these, um, these grapes we, you can find, because we, we got the land from a French um, producer, we, we own them now, and we have a lot of uh, French vines, like uh, we have the Chardonnay, we have the Pinot Noir, Malbec, in the in the in the most of them are those, but we also carry um, Pinot Gris, Grigio, uh, some uh, Syrah, and um, in, in lesser in some Grenache also. Um, I don't know if you want to say something about this. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I'm going to introduce my name myself. Sorry, my name is Julian. My second name is Mendoza. Uh, I am not the owner of the province, it's only my second name. Um, well, I am one of the owners of the Banya. Like Fernando said, we are a family company. I am in chair in, more in the commercial department. And my wife, Mariana, is in chair in the marketing and design department. Um, so for us, to, why we do a sparkling wine in Argentina? Because when you say about Argentina, you always think about Malbec. Well, uh, why we do sparkling wine in Argentina? Because it's our passion. Uh, from me and my wife, uh, doing the sparkling wine, we, we used to do uh, uh, every day. It's our passion for us. And, and that's why this brand, this, this, this company, is our passion. We put the best from our ass here in the, in the vineyard, in the product, in the design. Um, we, we say that like it's inside, it's outside. Um, we put a lot of investment and effort in the design and, uh, of the bottle. Uh, so we choose this bottle, but when you drink, it's even better than what you see. So again, like it's inside, it's outside. We, we say here in the company, uh, and well, um, um, why, why this name? Why Jasmine Monet? Because of course, if you think about uh, good champagne with a sparkling wine, sorry, uh, Spain and sorry, the rest of the country, but you have this thing in, in France. And well, Mariana, that the design the this company, uh, she comes from, she's a fashion designer also. Um, well, she, uh, she mixed uh, 
the name of Jasmine because the flower, because uh, she remember when she was very child, uh, her grandfather always uh, give a flower to Jasmine and also meet with the, the, the big artist Claude Monet um, and that's why the name and luckily with the year, like Fernando said, we come by our banya from a friend guy. So always from one place or another place, we are connected with France. Uh, with France. And that's why we, we, we know how to do traditional method very well. Uh, and that's why we have uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, that is uh, the grape that we use for our spine. So, um, I don't know, well, um, Regard the company, like Fernando said, we have 44 hectares. For me, and not only for me, for the people that know a lot about wine, our vineyard is in the best place in Mendoza. Uh, it's inside Valle de Uco. Valle de Uco is an area, and inside Valle de Uco you have different area. We are in Tupungato, and inside Tupungato we are in Walter Shari. Uh, we are very close to the famous brand here in Argentina. So we are uh, 1,200 meters above the sea. The land cave and the Cordillera de, la, de los Andes is really amazing. If you, if, if you have the opportunity to come to Argentina, you are going to see completely something different because the altitude and the different temperature between the day and the, and the night. So it's really amazing. And luckily, we are producing very good sparkling here from Argentina, it's something different. But believe me that the quality is amazing and we can compete with every, every, every sparkling worldwide. So I hope, I hope in future this crazy world change a little and, uh, well, you can try our sparkling uh, life in, in, in another event. Exactly. I don't know if you want to ask us something. If not, I continue telling you about us. Okay, no, no, uh, the questions that have been asked have been answered, so nothing to ask okay. at the moment. Okay, okay, um, we want to tell you that we are already exporting our wines, um, mainly we are covering America full, like uh, we are in the United States, we are in uh, Mexico, we are in Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, and um, we have across the, the ocean here, and we are uh, present in China, Singapore, Hong Kong, and some in, um, in the African continent, we are in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, our aim is to be in the whole world, but, you know, step by step. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the, of the things uh, that you asked us in the profile was about the total annual production, we are nearly uh, a little above 200,000 bottles per year in the three varieties. We have the Abrut sparkling wine, we have a Rosé sparkling wine, and I don't have the bottle here, but we also have a... Blanc de Blanc. Blanc de Blanc, exactly. The Blanc de Blanc at 100% uh, Chardonnay. Um, you want to talk a little yes. bit? Yes, one, one important thing about our vineyard is that it's completely organic or bio. Uh, from the beginning, we, we produce organic sparkling wine. It's not something that we do because today is something like fashion or something like that. It's our way of life. We, we love our, uh, our land. We love this world. So for us, it's very important to produce natural things. Because, like I say, this is sparkling wine we drink every day in the family with our friend. So we we do in a natural way. Uh, so it's something very important for us. We have organic certification worldwide. We have uh, also vegan certification worldwide, gluten-free certification worldwide. So it's something very important for us. And more every day, I think that's going to be more important to produce unique product in a natural way uh, for the best uh, of our world or, and also for our consumer. Um, Let's talk about our wines or? I don't know, 
Well, uh, somebody's um, asking, Linda's asking uh, if you could show the bottle, up, the label, I think, up at that bit closer to the camera, just to see the... Uh, yeah. If you hold them still for five seconds, one. Okay, good. They're just coming to focus. Takes a few seconds. Good. And uh, Nelson's asking where in Brazil you're um, exporting uh, to. In Brazil, in Brazil, we are in the north uh, of Brazil because, as you know, Brazil is like many countries inside one country. So we are in the north uh, in the state of, um, um, of uh, Fortaleza. Okay, well, I think he's asking because he's uh, a Brazilian importer, so maybe he'll contact you through the, um, sure. the website. Okay. So, uh, so, so that, that, that's it. You, uh, 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 do you have anything more to say about the, the two products? Or you, you, you mentioned, yeah, you, yeah, did you mention the, um, the aging on the lease? Did you mention? Okay, that's something very important. These two products are going to start with our web group. This is the name, the commercial name is uh, Jasmine Monet Black Group. This is made with 85% of Chardonnay and 15% of Pinot Noir, 18 months of Nelis, and it's a brood with eight grams of sugar. So it's something very, very unique because uh, it's very well balanced between fruit and acidity. It's something very spectacular when, when all the people try this, uh, start thinking about the brood, but when they try, uh, they realize it's something very unique. I think because the because the condition of our vineyard and because it's organic, it's completely different to the brood that you can find in the market. So if you want to make a trip, testing something, this is a good product to to start and and to try something uh, different and natural. Of course, it's organic certified. Um, and well, I think that from this I give you the complete information. Okay, thank you. I'm going to continue with this one. It's our rosé. Well, this is also a special rosé. It's made with 65% of Chardonnay and 35% of Pinot Noir. Again, 18 months on the list. Um, and this is something also complete. It's a different rosé. Always say different rosé. Uh, when I can do, uh, I, I, I give you the opportunity to the, to the people to try and then I give you the, the gram of sugar because have 22 grams of sugar, but most of the people when they try they say that only have 12 grams of sugar. Again, because it's very well balanced between acidity and fruit. Um, the color, uh, uh, yes, I'm going to show you the color of this one is something Amazing. I'm going to put Four. in one glass. Okay. I don't know if you can see. The color. I don't know if you can see that it's really rosé and the color is something very nice. Maybe I don't know the quality of the camera, but uh, believe me that is something very good. So, well, this is the two products that we are uh, presenting in this moment. Uh, of course, in our website, you can find more about our banya, but this is the two products that we are uh, presenting in this. Okay, well, it looks a very, very, very subtle rosé on the camera. Is that, is that the case? Very subtle. We, we didn't, we didn't. The color, the color. No, maybe like it, it's more rosé than satin. So I don't know. Maybe it's not good the camera. I am thinking, but it's more rosé than more pink, more 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 rosé. Yes, yes, more rosé. Okay, Tom is asking, what is the production volume? I think you mentioned that earlier, but maybe he's just tuned in. Yes, uh, well, you want to continue? Yeah, the total production of our sparkling wine in the three lines, we have three lines, different wine. Here you are seeing two of the product. It's 200,000 bottles per year. 
Right, right, okay. Okay, uh, Jessica's suggesting you use a, a white background to show the color of a rosé, but anyway, I think uh, uh, okay. we can uh, we can maybe have to take a look later if you put it against okay. the wall. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, so uh, we'll come back to you, so that, stay, stay with us. We're going to uh, go to Pamela now, who's in uh, Barcelona, I think. Uh, hello, Pamela. Okay, so uh, uh, we have a, 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 a delay with uh, Pamela's connection. So uh, when I finish speaking, there may be a few seconds delay till Pamela uh, catches up. So I'm going to uh, just say, um, ask Pamela if you could perhaps tell us a little bit uh, about her history of how she got into um, making sparkling wines as it is unique in the sense of making a, a red sparkling wine. So. She, Sure, she's going to tell us how that works, and uh, and 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 of course uh, how, how this all came about. So it's a very unique handcrafted wine, and uh, wait a few seconds, and we should get Pamela over to you, Pamela. So, um, so pa pa Pamela, maybe uh, you need to switch on your microphone. If you just check, you have your microphone switched on. Okay, so uh, I'm going to phone her just a second. Let's see if she'll pick up. Uh, if we're not able to get a connection, we'll... Hi, Pamela. Right. No, she's obviously got the phone, I think. If we're not able to uh, connect with her, we'll try and reschedule it for tomorrow and, and sort out the technical hitch that she's having. Okay, so... Bear with us. Uh, sorry if I could ask uh, Fernando back, Fernando and Julian. Um, so Gareth, over to you again. The um, the the big question that from the, the the importers watching now or, or in the future watching the replay. What uh, what export markets are you particularly interested in in hearing from? Well, uh, European markets would be Belgium, Holland. Germany and Switzerland. Uh, the UK perhaps is a bit in a, the doldrums at the moment with Brexit, but that would always be uh, anyone from there would be welcome as well. We are um, looking at Scandinavia as, uh, as, as a possibility as well. Um, and then um, further abroad, uh, America would be very interesting and also China and Japan. So they're really what we're concentrating. So we're really mainly concentrating on proximity on the the, the, the more uh, European local markets, but uh, any any market really is is more than welcome. I hear you have a gentleman from Brazil that we'd be at more than delighted to look at uh, that market. Um, so I mean, as I say, we are focusing on certain markets, 
Um, but as I say, America would be good, and Europe, as I said, Holland, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, um, UK as well would be very interesting. Ireland, I think the Republic is sadly is a rather complicated market right now for the excise duties are actually crazy on on anything that is um, uh, the carver or or traditional methods. Um, so that market would be, I think, more complicated, really. Um, and if anybody is is uh, coming in from uh, Norway, uh, that would also be very interesting to look at as well. Okay, great. So plenty of uh, scope there. And the um, mm. same question to Fernando. If you welcome Fernando back the, and Julian. The, the same question. We seem to have a lot of exports already. Are there any specific you export markets you'd be interested in um, uh, looking at? Like Canada? Yeah. <laughs> Linda? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know Linda yeah. from uh, Canada? Yes, Linda, yes, of course, yes. <laughs> right, so, yeah. so do, you, um, do you have any specific export markets you're particularly interested in? Yes, we are looking to introduce our product in Europe. We are not in Europe at the moment. So any, any country to enter going to be good for us. So we are looking for particularly Europe. And maybe another country could be more in Asia, talking about Japan, talking about uh, uh, that kind of market. And maybe another important China, because China is a very big market, huge market. So our aim for this year, um, I don't know, maybe for next year is to be in Europe, um, to be in Japan, or we are looking for important in Japan, and another in China, uh, or another Asian market that, that could be interesting. So here in America, we are working well, we are having imported in many of the country of Latin America and also North America. So now we have to cross the ocean, like Fernando said, uh, to Europe and to another market. Uh, like the people ask, I, I bring this to, to see the color. Maybe now we can see better. Let me see if you can. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, clear. Yeah. Very clear now. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. uh, another important thing is that we put, um, like I explained in the beginning, that we put our passion in, in the design of the bottle and also in the packaging. This is how it looks, the carton of six bottles. This is how it looks. So uh, we put passion in every detail of the brand. It is how the product individually case, individually case look inside the six, car six bottle carton, look like this, right here. So we know that the market is it's a very competitive market. So we are offering the best of the best here from Argentina. Uh, of course, um, uh, something is important is that in the bottle, uh, of course, the one is from Argentina and the, and the bottle, but the rest, the label, the paper come from Germany, all these things come from Spain, from Portugal, from Thank Italy. You. So we bring the best here to Argentina to offer the best worldwide. That is what we are doing. So uh, I hope to, to find you new important for our OK, great. Uh, so as we seem to have lost Pamela. <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't matter. We can, we'll uh, get her back tomorrow for the session. So if you're interested in watching uh, Pamela, that will be tomorrow at uh, quarter at three o'clock will be a three o'clock Spanish local time. Uh, if you want to tune in to um, to see the live interviews with one will be Pamela, and I think we have an Italian. Uh, but, uh, so uh, thank you, of course, to Gareth, and thank you to Fernando and Julian. Uh, if we look on you, your cheers, yes. <laughs> Wish we don't have any sparkling no. wine here, I'm afraid. Well, next year you'll have a, a glass to, to chill we'll, with that. We'll imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, you could come around and bring some cover. There you <laughs> go. Yep. We're just up the road. We're just, 
<laughs> we'll have to do that. Miss That's don't throw away. Excellent. Yes. Well, certainly compared with Fernando Julian, uh, we're literally next door neighbours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so, the, the, un placer. Un placer. Un placer. Yeah. Don't don't forget to download the PDF. So we've got the PDF for Ferreira Catasus and the PDF for Jasmine Monet. Smart and white. So they do download them. You have the technical data sheets and you have the uh, contact details of the producer. And of course, you can contact them through the website uh, by sending a, a form and uh, uh, ask for a meeting with them. And um, whether you're watching now uh, or, or watching the replays sometime in the future. Um, so uh, sometime in the future, but it might have all been drunk and exported by then. So be quick and uh, get in contact with these producers. Excellent. Okay. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Real pleasure. Thank you very much, everyone, to be there. Pleasure okay. to meet you guys. Great. Great. So there we go. That's it for today. Uh, we're back tomorrow uh, with a couple of sessions on uh, 50 Great Sparkling Wines Award, which you can see behind me, the competition. We'll be taking you through some of the uh, gold medal winners and uh, we're all the same for Cava. Uh, we also organize a 50 grade cabin competition. So if you can make it, with, uh, we're starting at two o'clock tomorrow, a bit later than today. So hopefully it gets more of you from the USA and Canada uh, up in time for the, for the first session. So delighted to see you again soon, everybody, and hope to see people again tomorrow for the program.